Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back in with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch July the 10th until the 14th. Yeah, I'm back again, this time not aided by AI because it was rubbish. Speaking of rubbish AI, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is getting its physical Switch release this week, a series supposedly loved by millions. What the marketing team doesn't clarify is that it's actually just one person who loves all million of the Five Nights at Freddy's games. They are more prolific than a rabbit who snorted cocaine in the Playboy Mansion. They're everywhere, even when they're not welcome anymore. I mean, I've never played them, but even I'm sick of them. This has a high price tag compared to what I expected, but it's supposed to be a meatier experience. Any FNAF fans have thoughts on this one? I would like to know. And our executive producer Cartoon Soren has picked this as his pick of the week. And if you want to order this or any of the retail releases in this week's episode, check the links in the description, especially if you're in North America. VGP is a great way to support this channel. Plus, they have good prices in favorable Canadian money and free shipping over 80 Canadian bucks worldwide, which is not that much. It's like one of two games. And if you purchase anything with our links, you can be within a chance of winning a $10 discount coupon each week. And this week's winner is James M. Congratulations, you will get an email from VGP in the coming days with your discount coupon. Thank you for your support. Getsu Fumiden Undying Moon is releasing in Europe this week. You may remember Limited Run handled this in North America, while well, Europe is getting it at retail this week. Konami bringing back a franchise from the dead because I think that they saw Dead Cells was quite popular and they wanted to cash in on the same vibe. I don't think it quite worked, so instead they just licensed the Castlevania IP to the Dead Cells team. We'll be getting that physically later this year. But if you want something awesome looking but only decent playing, and celebrate the fact Konami actually made a game with their own hands, then perhaps it's worth a go. There is a standard and collector's edition available. No Place Like Home is releasing this week. It's been at least three minutes since we've been made to feel cozy, and in the gaming industry, that's too damn long. You need to feel as cozy as possible at all possible times. Personally, their idea of cozy makes me feel like David Carradine in his final moments. Choking me. Here you are on Mars, apparently, and you're cleaning up trash and then making a farm or something like that. Litter Picking Simulator Beholder 3 is releasing in Europe this week. This should be out in North America already. I can't remember if I've talked about it or not. Kind of feels like I did, but I've talked about a thousand games and my head is kind of full these days. Mostly with thoughts of what I'm having for dinner and if I had a pet hedgehog, what would I name it? You know, like the important stuff, not Switch stuff anymore. This is set in a totalitarian world where you vie for political power, spy, do manipulative things, spread propaganda, install surveillance cameras and everything else modern social media currently does to you. Farm Together, I believe, is a rural version of a Beatles song. This released in Asia and I believe Europe already, but now all you Americans can feel what it's like to be without a Starbucks within two meters at all times. It's called Montana. If you said Frappuccino to them, they'd tell you to get back on the boat to Italy. It sounds like you got a disease. Reviews for this one are pretty positive. Casual audiences seem to enjoy it, which uh, kind of surprises me, I don't know. Male Mole is releasing in North America this week. You may remember this one got a super obscure physical release in Europe in like Germany or France or one of those non-English places that Nintendo likes more than the UK. Anyways, now it's releasing in North America. This is a cute looking 3D platformer collectathon. Might be a decent one for kids or adults alike. All right, the low prints. The Bridge Curse Road to Salvation is Play Asia's latest exclusive physical release in partnership with East Asia Soft. This is yet another horror game. They've been pumping these out recently, and it looks like it could be a bridge too far. Okay, that's a really bad pun. That seems unfounded because this looked to be your, you know, your standard first person horror game. The screenshots do have some spoopiness to it. Gotta love Asian horror, although I'm personally not like overly excited to order this one, although I probably will because I'm going for a full Play Asia collection. Yes, I'm one of those people. You can pre-order this on Thursday at 11 p.m. Hong Kong time. And if you want it, I'd appreciate it if you came back to this video then. Click the links below and you can support us at the same time with our code SWTV23 for a tasty 5% off. But please click the link first though. That's that's how to support us, okay? The code does nothing for us. That's for you. Oaken is Red Hot Games' latest game. Just like my marriage, they're a once a week kind of company these days, and rightly so. This is a turn-based tactical roguelike. Visually, it seems quite confusing. 
Plus, it's got deck building, so it obviously makes me want to vomit. But those of a stabler opinion than myself seem to think it's actually pretty good. It's available to pre-order at Red Hot Games right now on their website with a deluxe edition, an exclusive slipcover, and you can get 10% off with the code SWATCH10. But if you just want the standard edition and you live in North America, you can get in on the action there with the links below to VGP. They will carry some PAL versions. Rift Tracks, the game, is limited runs released this week. I think they may have learned their lesson and are slowing down a little bit. Maybe they realized they were single-handedly destroying the Switch physical market, but uh, I say that as they're about to do their summer presentation, which will no doubt mean four Switch physical pre-orders every week for the next 10 months. Speaking of that, you know, I'm both kind of interested and dreading what they've got planned for like the announcements because this is the first presentation with the Embracer group as their overlords. So uh, I do think they'll actually have some huge games, which will annoy me because it will 100% just be games that, you know, should be a retail anyways. They're just preferring to be lazy and anti-consumer. Anyways, Rift Tracks. I didn't even know they had a game. I do enjoy MST3000. In fact, uh, you know, a bit more Jordan style is partly inspired by it, but I'm not sure how it will translate to a game since it will rely on non-comedians to make comedic stuff. So who knows that could go really wrong. Are your friends funny? Probably not. Pre-orders open later this week. All right, we're heading into the imports. We're heading into PlayAsia territory. If you want to import any of the games shown here, then please consider using the PlayAsia links below. That's always the number one way to support us. PlayAsia have made this series what it is. And yeah, thank you. Plus, if you click our link, we can support you as well. Yeah, with our discount code SWTV23. All right, Atelier Marie remake of The Alchemist of Salberg is the biggest import this week of that, I'm sure. This is a remake of the very first Atelier game, and it's a back-to-basics affair. It's quite faithful to the original, but looks way better. Kind of plays the same though, and I will have a review of this later this week. It's a cute, breezy game that lacks any kind of pressure or strings attached from knowing about the rest of the series. Everything else is simplified, and it's a great alternative for those who think the newer games have more baggage than a Disney child star. The only heavy burden here is in the key art for Marie herself. Very, very heavy. It's a great starting point and is only available digitally in the West. In the East, however, they have it physically, but you have to be a little bit careful with the one you buy. There are a few versions that you don't want because they don't have English, so be sure to click the one linked in the description. That is the one you want. Don't buy the Japanese version. Don't buy the Chinese version. No, there's no English there. Get the Southeast Asian version that's linked below. That's the one you want. Fans of JRPGs, fans of cuteness, fans of heavily stacked ditzy ladies, well, this will be the game for you. And our executive producers, Precision Plague, Issa, God of Resin, Brent McLean, Thorn Metal Luna, and Jcross7776 have chosen this as their pick of the week. Toho Shinsekai, longing for an alternative world, also known as Toho New World, is another one I'm hoping you'll need for your collection because of all the billion Toho fan games there are out there, this has got day one buy written all over it, well, for me, because it's Toho as an action RPG. Sure, just as the universe is infinite and everything that has ever happened has happened an infinite amount of times in every single possible way, even then, I'm pretty sure there's not been a Toho game that looks as quality as this one. I do enjoy the Toho games, but the production value tends to be, it's fine, we'll use sticky tape to put it together, that kind of vibe. Most of the budget goes on the screechy voice acting, but this doesn't have any voice acting, so they could afford to make an actual game to go alongside it. Look at it, looks like a proper adventure. This is not getting a Western physical, at least that's announced. The one in Japan and Asia almost certainly have English, but maybe not the Chinese one, okay? I'm not sure about that one. The ones linked below do, okay? So just trust me, okay? And there's even a collector's edition that has my fancy. And stay tuned because yes, I will have a review of this. Uh, I think it's on Wednesday. Uh, inconveniently, almost the same time as the Adelia review. So uh, yeah, I might have to spread them out a little bit. We'll have to see. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon Chronicles is another great import this week, especially if you missed out on limited runs releases. This is a double pack of two 8-bit style Castlevania wannabes. Many say they are both great times, and now they're getting a Japanese release in a way more convenient fashion, especially since limited runs sold them individually for the same price as this very affordable double pack. Seriously, if there is a series of smaller games and limited run only do one of them, just 
just wait because Japan is fine with not gouging your wallet. Unless, of course, it's got anime girls, at which point, you know, they will gouge your wallet and they'll gouge your bank account as well. And they'll probably gouge your dad's pension pot that he's been saving for for the last 30 years. But uh, yeah, it's worth it because anime girls. Of course, they have English. And if you don't own the limited room ones, get this one. And our executive producers, Instacritic, punk producer Dane Wilkinson, they know what's up. It's their pick of the week. Redemption Reapers is releasing in Japan and Asian regions this week. You may remember that Limited Run started pre-orders a couple of weeks ago. Well, if you don't want to wait for that or you want it a bit cheaper, then the Japanese version may be the way to go. There's even a collector's edition available with a soundtrack and an art book. The game itself looks decent, but perhaps slightly mediocre in execution. It's a Fire Emblem style strategy game, fairly hardcore. Also, quick edit. Europe is getting a retail release of this as well in the future, so uh, yeah, maybe not so important for some of you anymore. And our executive producers, Robotech and Vey have chosen this as their pick of the week. Gunya Monster is going to be a pretty obscure import exclusive. I'm almost sure like no one is going to buy this one. Not because it's bad, but because it's an online game. One of those four versus one type multiplayer games. There's loads about these days, but this has that Splatoon style aesthetic. That is really pleasing on the eye. This does have English and there's no Western physical release. But, ooh, shock horror. Our executive producer Oz Golo has chosen this as his pick of the week. A quick mention to Beautiful Desolation, getting released in Japan this week. Remember this was released in Asia quite a while back, now it's Japan's turn. Will the West get this physically? I have no idea. And also, Japan is getting a Color X Malice, like a special box version for some reason. Alright, it's the Community Spotlight. Bunny Bear sent in this very striking photo, very eye-catching for um, some reason. I mean, look at that, Three Kingdoms. Oh, getting ready for Nobunaga's ambition next week, I see. Executive producer Cartoon Sorensen in the collector's edition of Kizuna AI, which comes with a huge box, which includes a mini lightsaber. Choco Loco James picked up an import from last week, Trouble Witches, with the longest name ever, and it looks like a really fun chaotic shooter. Executive producer Instacritic sent in this photo with one hell of a deep cut, Sushi Bar. That's, uh, that's some commitment to collecting. Micka McFlynn sent in this photo with some recent games like Rain Code, Unmetal, Noob and Trails into Reverie. The Switch is going along nicely still. Radio to Rance is sent in this collector's edition of Trails into Reverie, which I did buy myself, but it's on the way to England because I can't have my wife seeing it. Psych Villain, thank you so much for the donation. I truly hope you enjoy that Walmart exclusive sticker sheet. I have to say that Moonscar's artwork, as basic as it is, I've got to admit is really effective. Steven S sent in this photo of some eclectic games. Those Dragon Ball games are evergreen sellers. They've sold a disgusting amount. Uh, they, just, they just continue to sell. It's genuinely impressive. Switch Black sent in this photo showing off the exclusive cover version of Ikai. I can't remember which event, maybe like PAX or something, but I think it looks better than the normal one, which is, you know, why isn't this the normal one? They might have sold more. It looks awesome. Last Neon getting hyped about Pikmin 4 with the purchase of Pikmin 3. Soon you'll be able to have every single proper Pikmin game physically on the Switch. That's pretty cool. Our Man in Japan executive producer Vey sent in this photo showing off the collector's edition of Ghost Trick. It's a very minor CE but still pretty cool to see. Capcom usually do these smaller collector's editions in Japan like for Akami, Phoenix Wright, Onimusha and now Ghost Trick. Wankel Rotary Engine sent in this photo showing off two incredible recent imports. One of them the biggest import of all time and another one, Etrian, will probably be close in the future. Maybe too pricey for some. Let's have a roundup. Joshua Brown. Andrew R. Axaru. Pabs. Robin H. That bloody sadomasochist. Kayla. Ashura G. Starby. Needless Dragon. Singlis. For retro sake. All right, please send me a pictures on Twitter at so what about game if Twitter's still alive. I don't know what's going on over there, but you're all making me laugh with the complaints. You're so funny. Uh, you can DM me. Don't don't tag me, okay, anymore because it's it's useless. And uh, you can send it in an email switchwhatspotlight@gmail.com. 
and uh, our Discord, the server link should probably be below, sometimes I forget to put it there, but it should be, and you can submit it in the submission section once it is open. It probably won't be open on Monday. I close it on Saturday, and I open it on like Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday when somebody reminds me to do it. All right. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Kato, Jcross7776, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Yisa, They, Mental Traveler, Our Phone, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Play, Kadacha, Ozgolo, Totally Grateful, and Alex M. Plus you. Yeah, you're watching right now. If you watch all the way through, please leave me a bridge emoji in honor of the bridge curse. Is there a bridge emoji? There probably is because there's a emoji of everything else. Yeah?